What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Badger. Super stoked for this guest. We have um, a, a coach, a college football um, uh, expert, someone who's a father of a player on the Wisconsin team right now. Uh, very, very excited to pick his brain. We're going to get into it next on Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked on Badgers. Thank you so much for tuning in, as always. And we're going to just jump right into today's guest because we don't want to waste any of his time. We are bringing Coach James Chaney on uh, from Lee High School in Florida, now joining Deion Sanders staff in Colorado, also the father of Jake Chaney, Wisconsin's head linebacker. Coach, thank you so much for jumping on the show, man. Hey, thanks, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. And you're somebody, I followed you on Twitter quite a bit. You do a bunch of stuff. You're a motivational speaker. You created a website to help recruits kind of build their, their influence and their visibility. Um, and now, like I said, you're going to join Dion staff in Colorado. What I want to start here, though, um, with your son on the Wisconsin team. Obviously, you were involved in coaching him as a high schooler. He went to join Paul Chris staff. What was it like watching from afar as Wisconsin staff turned over in season for you? Well, you know, I've always taught my kids to, to be ready uh, for transition at any time. You know, life is full of changes, man. So you have to be ready for change. You can't make emotional decisions. And, um, you know, you got to embrace change. And um, I've been talking to them about that since they've been in elementary school. So, you know, Jake was ready for it, man. He's, he's, he's ready to take on the challenge and he's embracing it. And, um, you know, he, he's going to roll with the punches. When you're watching Jake, uh, because he's been in the program for a couple of years, had 38 tackles, I believe, this year. Had some. I think you and I actually talked offline before about how impressive I thought he looked in some games. Are you watching him more as a father or as a coach now, or is it hard to separate those for you? Uh no, man. I'm. I'm. I. I, I kind of watch it as as a coach and a father. You know, of course, I get emotional seeing my son out there on the football field, but also, you know, I, I try to talk to him about some things that I think he can improve upon. Uh, some of the ways, you know, uh, about him preparing for what's going on. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm happy with his progress. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm excited, you know, for the Badgers' future. And, uh, man, I, I look forward to seeing what Coach Fickle brings to the table. Well, that's where I want to go next because you're you're a coach who sent several kids to D1. You're very connected. You know college football. What do you know, just from a national perspective, what does the Luke Fickle hire uh, say to you from Wisconsin standpoint? Well, the thing about it is I've met so many coaches that I can ask questions about him. And, you know, I, I know a bunch of the Ohio State guys and, and the guys who recruit my school. And, you know, everybody to the letter says that Coach Fickle is just a great coach. And, um, you know, that makes me look, you know, so forward, you know, to seeing, you know, what the future holds. But um, I'm, I'm excited, man. And, you know, of course, I was, I was sad to see uh, Coach Chris and Coach Leonard go and some of the other staff. But, you know, like I said, man, every life is based on change. And um, I'm just looking forward to seeing how it goes. And talk a little bit more about, about Jake now. What did you see? Did you see anything specifically on the field where he kind of grew as a player this year coming off last year? Well, I mean, um, of course, he's older. Um, he's, he's, he's a little bit more physical. You know, Jake is, is a young player. You know, he's only uh, – he, when he got there, he was 17 years old. And I knew he would have to kind of, you know, mature age-wise. But he's always been kind of like a student of the game. You know, he, he knows the whole defense. He watches a lot of film. You know, he works out all the time, you know. So he's always had that ability in him. But anywhere you go, you got to adjust to it. Um, coming from high school to the Big Ten is a big adjustment. And I thought he got better last year, you know, with the time he had to play. And that's all I asked him to do, man, is just try to get uh, 1% better every day and I think he really contributed to that linebacker room this year yeah he, he looked very very like he's so instinctive right he drew a lot of comparisons to Chris Orr who was a former Badgers linebacker very instinctive um does that come from being the son of a, a high school coach or is that just hardwired into him is he just different well you know um my dad played college football at Virginia State University my brother played for Southern Illinois I played for Florida State you know Jake's brother plays for Valdosta State I mean, we're just kind of like a football family, um, you know, but Jake, Jake has always been one of those type of guys who want, I want, he wants to know every detail, you know, he wants to know why we're blitzing. He wants to know why we're in a 30 front, you know, yeah. he, he's just one of those guys that he's going to know every position 
and he's always been like that. I wasn't like that. You know, I, I, I played defensive line. I was like, look, what gap I got, I ain't worried about nobody else. You know, but he he's a student of the game. I think he's really going to be a great – if he wants to coach football, I think he's going to be a great coach because he's really a, a big-time student of the game. Oh, that, that's awesome. And I wanted to ask, too, um, with, with the coaching change, and I heard somebody say coaching is becoming more of a young man's game, not, not necessarily age-wise, but from just the way we look at the game, the way we treat players, the way NIL is happening. Do you think in Paul Chris falls into this? Paul Chris was a great coach, won 70% of his games. He's an incredible person. Um, but do you think that the game is maybe passing some coaches that have a certain way of looking at it by a little bit? No, I don't think so because you can hire young guys to fill in those gaps. Mm. And that's that's what a lot of programs are doing now, man. They're they're hiring the inner city, you know, high school coaches, the young guys to go out there and recruit and and, and to deal with some of the players even on the field. You know, it's a, it's a big uh, a young man's hiring movement in college football because the kids you need to have uh, people who can relate to the kids. I mean, that's that's huge. And, um, you know, Coach Prime is doing that, you know, and, and I think Coach Fickle is going to do it. I mean, it's just a, a big time trend now because, you know, you just that mental health deal when it comes to kids and, you know, dealing with kids who are far away from home and getting homesick and, and trying to fit in socially. You need pieces on your staff, you know, who can deal with those types of situations. Hey, I want to finish on this with uh, Luke Fickle and kind of what they're doing in Wisconsin. Then I want to go to what you got going on next because um, I'm very excited to pick your brain. You mentioned okay. Coach Prime. We're going to get to there next. Uh -huh. uh, one of the criticisms of this move for Wisconsin, they're bringing in Phil Longo, which was North Carolina's offensive coordinator, runs a much more open system, a spread system. And listen, Dion, Dion likes to throw it around as well. Prime wants to throw it around. Sean Lewis wants to throw it around. You know, Colorado's new offensive coordinator. People yeah. have said you can't play that type of system in northern cold weather stadiums. Is that – do you buy into that or is that just kind of overblown? I don't buy into that because you can, you know, just because you're a tempo fast paced offense doesn't mean that you can switch it up and run the football when you need to. I mean, no, no guy, no offense coordinator that's coming in making that much money is going to say, Hey, you know, when it's uh, 10 degrees and it's a foot of snow on the ground, we're going to go tempo and throw the ball a hundred times. He's going to be like, no, nah, man, we, we're going to go 21 personnel and we're going to, get a fullback in here and an H-back, and we're going to run the football down your throat. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Thing during the Maryland game. Think about the Maryland game. I got a kid, uh, Jake had a teammate on Maryland who's a defensive lineman, and he was like, man, it was cold. You know, it was cold. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, uh, 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 Jim Leonard and, and the crew, uh, Coach Witted and all them boys took that, you know, used that to their advantage, and they ran the ball against them because, uh -huh. you know, the Maryland guys were wet and cold. So, you know, when you're playing in weather elements, like, you know, we're, you know, it's snowing here now, you know, you have to be able to adjust and, um, you know, play into to, to what you need to play into. And I'm sure, you know, uh, our coach uh, uh, Longo understands that and he's going to use that to his advantage. And coach, man, we are so appreciative of your time, by the way, you're standing outside, finished up this interview with us. Um, incredibly gracious. I want to move into your next step here because you did leave Lehigh. Um, you're going to join Colorado, Dion, Dion staff as a, a director of player personnel, correct? Someone who's going to be almost the, the GM of the roster. Director of player development. Player development. Okay. Yes, sir. So what made you, because you have, you're coaching a big program. You sent multiple kids to D1. What made you kind of leave that, that really great opportunity and buy into what Dion is doing in Colorado? Well, you know, me and Dion grew up together. I played, high school and college football with Dion, And, um, you know, he, he offered me a job at Jackson state, but it wasn't the right time. But, uh, when he got Colorado, he came back and he said, man, I need your help. I'm trying to, you know, make history. And of course I jumped on board, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh Dion is a visionary man. You know, he does things his way. And, um, you know, I, you know, Boulder, Colorado should be happy that somebody like that, you know, is here. I mean, the recruiting room is crazy. I mean, he's got guys from LSU, from all over the country, you know, that can go get them. And I'm going to tell you, man, it's, it's going to be exciting, you know, when we line up to play TSU. I mean, I'm sorry, TCU, um, you know, the first game of the season. It's going to be super exciting. I wanted to pick your brain on this, too, because, again, you're someone that has a really unique perspective as a, a parent of a D1 athlete, a high school coach, and now joining a big-time program with a big-time coach. Where – 
where we're at with NIL right now and where college football is at, is that where we're going to be in five years or is this going to change dramatically? Where do you think we're headed with this as college football, the sport in general? I really don't see it changing, man. Um, you know, I hear it talked about every day now. Um, I think it may be uh, regulated or, you know, maybe a, a, a few more parameters put on it. But I think it's here to stay now, man. I think, you know, the big change for me, because I got a heart for high school kids, you know, with the transfer portal now, man, you got to be in the top one or two percentile to get a college football scholarship. Um, you know, I think all teams are going to have to lean heavy on the portal. I know some people say that, you know, we're not going to be a portal built team, but you know, now I think, you know, it's like when you're in Rome, you got to do what the Romans do to keep up, you know, when you get a high school kid, you have to develop that kid for at least a couple of years. You know, you don't have many Braylon Allen's coming in, you know, guys who can play right away. You know, you gotta, you know, if, 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 if you're like, I, I heard um, uh, coach Trestle last night and uh, he was talking about, you know, they asked him if, if it was one position group that he needed a little more depth. And he was saying defensive line, you can't mm -hmm. get that depth from recruiting high school kids. You get that depth from recruiting kids who, you know, want to leave, you know, their, their situations and come to a different situation that better fits their needs now. And I'm, and I'm telling you right now, when I was at Florida state after a home game, we, we play CBS, we play on CBS, we play universal Florida and we, we go shower, get dressed, walk through the atrium to, you know, to meet our parents and a GA would hand us a $10 bill. And that's what, you know, the, the training table was closed. So we had to go eat somewhere for 10 bucks. And even back then, you know, that wasn't a lot of money. So is the NIO out of control in some ways? I thought I'd say yes, but I'm so excited that college, you know, athletes are able to, to get a little bit of money, man, to, to survive in, in, in college. Have yeah, no I problem agree. with it. No, I, I don't either. I think the NCAA stubbed their own foot by trying to basically never do anything. So this exactly. is the result. That's what exactly. they get. Exactly. Um, and I'm, I'm happy for them. Agreed. Two more quick questions because I, I, I want to be incredibly gracious of your time. I know you got a ton of stuff to do, but with the, the portal, you mentioned the portal and now NIL, are the demands on coaches becoming too much? Like, do they need, do, do they need a bigger support staff? And then is even that enough at times? Well, it's, it's a lot of moving parts that, you know, I've only been here three days. This is my third day. Bunch of moving parts, a uh, bunch of things, bunch of boxes that need to get checked, bunch of things that need to be in order. And, um, you know, yes, I, I do feel like the the college football programs need more off the field staff. You know, I think the coaching, st the coaching guys with the GAs and, and the analysts, I think that's fine, but there's so much mental health issues going on. There's so many life issues going on with these kids. And when you're trying to put together a defense or trying to coach a segment, I think it's nearly impossible for you to have a family and coaching football, looking at film, recruiting. I think it's possible, impossible sometimes for the uh, assistant coaches to handle that. Mm -hmm. So now I feel like off the field personnel really needs to, to be increased so you can maintain the mental health of your football program. Yeah, that's a great, very well said. Um, last, last question here, coach. What is the ceiling at Colorado in Boulder with Dion and this staff that he's building? Man, you know, when you talk about Dion Sanders, man, that's a that's a big brand name, you know. And when you're trying to get a kid to at least come visit, or a kid who has aspirations of playing in the NFL, or a, a kid who wants so, social media attention, I mean, or even a coach, you know, um, you know, saying no to Dion is very hard. And Dion has a heart of gold, man. You know, he, he's he's tough. He has his demands. But at the end of the day, man, he, he loves people. He's great with people. He wants to see people shine. And, um, you know, it's, it's been first class since I've been here. And, um, you know, I think the Dion brand will, 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 will make the University of Colorado football program go through the roof in the Big 12. Uh, that's awesome. We're excited to watch it. And, Coach, Thank you so much, Coach James Cheney. Thank you so, so much for your time. Incredibly gracious. Standing outside waiting to get into your hotel. Well, you know, you know, it's crazy because it's not like I'm, I'm from South Florida. Right. And right now it's like 30 degrees and it don't really feel that cold. 
you know, but if it was 30 degrees in Fort Myers, Florida, I'd probably die or something. <laughs> right. You know, but it's snow on the ground and, you know, you got to kind of watch how you walk. I'm learning pretty quick. I don't want to slip and break nothing on no ice. So, you know, I'm just chilling, man. I'm enjoying it. The mountains are like, you could just look at a mountain. I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm looking at a mountain. So it's, 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 it's crazy that up here, man. It's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous here. That's awesome, man. And congratulations on the incredible opportunity. Certainly you've earned it, but still, congratulations. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'm a big fan of yours, brother. Oh, thank you so much. That means a ton coming from you. <laughs> All right, man. Good luck. And uh, yeah, really, really do appreciate the time. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right.